Hey everyone, Derp here, back with the Battle Pirates video, and this one I'm going to be showing you three easy fleets to kill salvages of any level, or most levels, with no damage if you drive correctly. So my first fleet I'm going to be using is a Mortal Marauder fleet, perfect for lower levels. And this one you can gauge the target eye to go directly south, so you have the best position on the map, because that actually does matter a little bit. Once you're in the battle, I like to press the up arrow to select all my ships because driving them all at once is easier than individually. I'm going to group them all off on the left here just so it's a nice place they're all stacked up. And the enemy fleet is moving towards me here and they're trying to kill me, they're on auto, while I can drive and I can kill them. So the way you do this for no damage is you are smarter than the AI and you don't just try to throw your ships with them and have that work. Once I have all my ships stacked up, I'm going to make a hard turn down to the bottom corner here, bottom left corner. And this is because the weapons I'm using are mortars. And mortars are dumb fire weapons, which means they shoot at where the ship was. They don't follow it, they don't shoot at where it is. So I'm shooting at these front ships here, and my mortar is actually landing where they were, which is on these back ships. So I'm able to kill these back ships fairly easily if I do it correctly. So I'm going to keep moving here, try to stack my ships a little bit better, but my mortars are landing on these guys almost perfectly in the center of them and doing damage to them while I'm taking no damage. You will note that the enemy ships are actually also shooting mortars at me, but they're missing because I'm keeping moving, and once again mortars fire at where you were, not where you are. Which is an interesting thing you should note here. You can see here I killed one ship already and two are almost dead, even without coming near those. These have short range ballistic cannons on them, which will wreck your ships if you get close, but if you do it this method well, you shouldn't have that issue happen a lot at all. So once there's only one ship left, maybe far away, and you have these two kind of spread apart here, I'm going to make a little angle here and turn in a bit more, just so that this one has a chance to catch up. Then I'm going to turn away again, just so it gets back on center a little bit. And why should you kill these targets instead of having other people kill you for them? Well, the answer is actually pretty simple. You get resources no matter who kills it, but if you kill it, you also get blueprints, which are super useful. Because if I want to use a good mortar on my ship at a higher level, or even a mid-level, um, the blueprint mortar will be 10 times, even from salvages, 10 times better than the researchable mortar. So I'm going to keep moving here to try not to get stuck in the corner. And you might take some damage from these enemy mortar hits, but that won't really matter because your ships are actually instant repair. And what instant repair means is if you kill your ship off all the way, 100% dead, no life, you can actually repair it instantly because this ship has so few armor that it takes under 5 minutes to repair. And what I mean by that is because anything in your ship you can repair it for 5 minutes. Free. You can see here, my fleet will actually probably pretty much 100% die here. Yep, it's 100% dead, but I killed him too, which means I won. In this game, in most cases, the player wins ties. So my fleet is 100% dead. It's going back to base, but I won here. And I can actually repair each individual hull one by one by one. So this mortar fleet, which I'll show the build at the very end, is a great starter fleet. You unlock most of the tech fairly early, and you can use that to go out and get resources, build stronger ships, and research stronger, stronger ships. The first thing I research is kind of to do with this next fleet here. This is my Predator subfleet. And submarines are a bit more technical in nature of the game because they have to go underwater and they have to come up for air and you have to grab them around. Uh, kind of same thing. So as I enter the battle here, you'll note that I don't have five subs. One of them is a random ship. I have a long ship in here, but you can use a gunboat, whatever you want really. Just make it something cheap and inexpensive. You can just take that and move it straight into the enemy fleet and let that die. And take your other four stubs here and just stack them up. Once again, up arrow will stack all your ships up together, while right arrow will cycle, down arrow will stop, things like that. I have a whole different video here which talks about all the different controls in the game. Back to the task at hand. So my one flagship is dead, but that doesn't matter. I'm not worried about that. I'm going to take my subs and kind of move them around a little bit. You can see as soon as this little clock icon here hits red, they're surfaced. When they're surfaced, they take damage, which is bad. You don't want damage. Once it go gets back to zero here, it will restart and go underwater. This blue timer is how far it has to tick down here before I'm surfaced again. 
And now I'm doing the same kiting method on these enemy ships, which is where I move away from them without them shooting at me, which is what I did in my first segment here with the Mortar Marauders. I like to target the smaller ships first, just so that they don't, they're not an issue when I'm killing this big, this big battleship or dreadnought here. You can see I'm going to surface again here, and he's going to shoot at me, but once again, mortars that he's shooting are dump fire. They shoot where you were, not where you are, so I don't have to worry about that too much. And once I go underwater here, I can't take damage, even if they land right on top of me. I'm going to target these little ships. I'm going to keep moving just so they don't get too close, because these white rings mean the enemy ships actually have sonar, which means they can detect me, but that's not really a huge issue in these targets because it's kind of low. Anyway, I'm going to keep moving. And these big mortars actually maybe have like a 5-10% chance of hitting you, especially if you're driving kind of slowly or you're in a pattern. So I like to make sure I'm at a pretty huge distance away, max range or out of range of him when he's shooting at me, so there's not too much of an issue. These landed well behind me, but they might have landed closer. You can see here, no damage so far on this target, but I'm going to swoop back in for another pass and hopefully kill this guy or at least get him close to dead. And subs are actually kind of interesting in the game. Once you get once you get the hang of it, you'll be able to do really well in these targets, do it for not a lot of damage, and it will pay off in the long run. Because resources are basically your limiting factor at a lower level, you won't have a ton of them, and it's going to be hard to build some higher ships. Maybe you can unlock them in the foundry, but you can't actually build them yet because they have such a high resource cost. This guy's almost dead here. Just one more pass will kill him. And pace inch is the key in these targets. I've spent two and a half minutes on this one already, but I'm going to go back in and do it for no damage because that's how we do things here. Do things for free, work smarter, not harder. And basically, this is kind of your mid-tier ship. You're able to do some decent stuff with it, but it's not your best possible fleet you can use. And I'll show you the build for this at the very end, along with all my other builds I'm going to use in here. So once you can research the mortar marauders you can build them um get those all built up you can then build the cred sub research them build them and you can even win blueprints from using these um that was a side note i'm going to go back to my next fleet here which is my seawolf fleet once you have the predator fleet you want to use your seawolf fleet go out and be able to research those be able to build those research all the weapons on those which i'll tell you about at the very end and you can engage the high level targets so the salvages I've engaged so far are 23, a 40, this one's a 51. You can also use this fleet in its level 71 with some practice. So I'm going to stack my ships like normal here like I did the last two battles. And this one is much more fun to drive in my opinion because there's kind of more action involved and it's a lot easier to do it correctly, which is nice. So I have five pretty strong enemy ships moving at me. If I just went on auto, I would die and run to them and die, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to group my ships up, I'm going to do a hard turn, and keep moving. Because like in the last two ones, these are there are, actually are mortars in these targets here. Um, I believe it's this ship right here that has mortars in it, so I'm going to select that because I just don't like dealing with those too much. These ships will it shoot at you if they get close enough, but you don't really have to worry about that. At least for that first fast one there. I'm going to keep moving away here, make sure I'm staying out of their range, kiting them. They are in my range, I can shoot at them, but they can't shoot at me, except for those mortars like I talked about. I'm going to make sure my ships are all stacked up here nicely, otherwise I might take some damage on the last one, which is not ideal. So you're going to take this this fleet, go out, hit hundreds of targets, maybe. You'll get a lot of blueprints, a lot of resources, and you'll be able to start building up your foundry holes, your blueprint holes, to hit a lot better targets, maybe start in your Forsaken Missing, which is the most important uh, target or series in the game here um, but this is just showing this video is just showing you how to do these targets for no damage or instant repair like in the first first battle so I'm just laying my missiles into them over and over while kiting them staying at max range I'm adjusting every three or four seconds or so so I can see what's going on and I can move my ships so that it's a better circle I'm staying I'm doing a huge circle around them it's nicer uh, kiting them more effectively which is super important and like I said resources those are the limiting factor for you you want to go out and do as many of these as you can all of us had to go through this grind if you have other people in your sector if you ask nicely hey my best fleet's a level 71 or it's a level 5 Seawolf can someone please open some resources I can't really do it very well 
they a lot of people will help you out as long as you're not a jerk about it but opening blueprints yourself or opening salvages yourself allows you to get blueprints which are much better than your researchable tech so I'm going to show you all my various fleet builds here, what I'm using, how to build it, that kind of thing, which I kind of teased about earlier in this so video. This is my mortar fleet. I have Diplomat Mortar 1s here. Uh, if you have Wait for 2, I would use those. Uh, obviously, 2 is better than 1, more damage, stuff like that. I would not actually put any armor whatsoever on this, unless you're going to be using it for hitting like low-level player bases or something, which I wouldn't super recommend, but no armor just means less resources to build, less time to build, and... For especially if you have it, I would suggest high explosive shells 1, so you have more splash, so you can do more damage, do more splash damage to the enemy ships, which will be great. If you don't have that, maybe engine would work if you have that unlocked, or probably just leave it blank would work pretty effectively too. So I'm going to start a pair here, speed up for instantly, like I was talking about, uh, and that will actually work great. That's one of the benefits of these lower level ships. If you make a mistake, it doesn't cost you anything. You just go out and keep playing. Next level ship is also instant repair if you take damage with it, the Predator Sub. And the sub, I have two Havoc Torps here. These are researchable. If you have Havoc Torps 3 on the unlock, that might work, but try to get some more resources. Ask someone for help maybe, or just do it yourself. To unlock these ones, they're in your weapons lab. And your special here is from your advanced lab. It's your engine upgrade, so you're more nimble. You can move around faster, more maneuverable, outrun some mortars. Uh, that's the way I like to play this game, do kind of cheaply for free and not really take too much damage while doing it. So this is my Predator sub build. It does have an armor slot in it, but I don't use those. Like I said, it just means more resources, more time. Which leads to... Now my last ship that I'm showing you in this video, my Seawolf. My Seawolf has Cutlass 3 missiles on here, which is actually super important. You don't want to use... You do not want to use Cutlass 4 here because they just miss more often and they weigh a lot more. These one, Cutlass 3s are actually better, um, so that's super important for you to know. As far as specials, at least Engine Upgrade 2, maybe Engine Upgrade 1 if you're going to hit level 30 ones instead or something. Or well, if you want to hit 40, 50, 70 ones, you need Engine Upgrade 2 so you're fast enough to outrun those mortars. Then for other specials, I like Laser Targeting 3, adds accuracy on there because what good is it shooting at something if you're just going to miss all the time? And then the most important special on the ship is the missile range here, which is Solid Field Booster 2, has 20% missile range, which is really great in these targets, so you can outrange the enemy ships and do more damage to stuff because you won't actually get hit because you'll be able to outrange them, outshoot them, kind of be able to use that kiting thing I was talking about earlier. So if you think you know someone who might enjoy this video, find it useful, maybe post it to your Alliance page or something, go ahead and do that. That's great. Allows more players and you know, helps them out more. And I hope I taught you something in interesting or useful. If I did, leave a like. And this is Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.